Inflation is the general rise in the price of goods and services. It is an economic phenomenon that exists when everything we buy starts to go up in price. Prices usually increase as a way to control supply and demand. Think about it this way. If I have 10 cups of coffee and 20 people want coffee, I'll increase my price until only 10 people are able to afford my 10 cups. I sell the exact same amount of coffee, but I make more money from it. In this way, we can talk about price rises being driven on the supply side by shortages of supply enticing firms to put up prices, or on the demand side by an increase in demand for goods above the capacity to provide at current prices, or it could be a mix of both. However, we need to be careful to distinguish the economic phenomenon of inflation from a specific price rise. For example, my morning cup of coffee may go up by an extra one pound, but unless there's a general increase in all prices, this means it's not inflation, it's just my barista trying to ruin my morning, and does not usually require central bank intervention. That being said, the price rise of a specific good can lead to a general rise in all prices due to the interconnected nature of modern industry. Oil is used as fuel for transport and logistics, energy production, industrial equipment, and agricultural machinery. A rise in its price brings about a rise in the price of many other products. Or, a factor leading to a price rises in one industry may be common and happening to many industries at the same time. If too much money beyond what the economy can absorb is printed in too short a space of time, people will use this new money to purchase more things. But that means many industries will face increased demand from all the people with new money and will need to increase prices to compensate. Another key point to make is that inflation can feed into itself. Say the cost of energy increases, meaning the cost of manufactured parts increases. Now, if energy producers need to replace some of those parts, that will be more costly for them in turn, which will force them to increase their prices again. If they increase their prices by a lesser amount, inflation should eventually settle down. But if they have to increase their prices by a larger amount, inflation can accelerate. The role of the exchange rate and international trade also needs to be considered. If the currency depreciates, imports become more expensive. If the exchange rate is two pounds to one US dollar, that means one pound can buy me two dollars or two dollars worth of goods. If the exchange rate weakens to one pound to one US dollar, that same pound can now only buy me one dollars worth of goods. Or conversely, I will now need to spend two pounds to buy the same amount of goods I could have bought with one pound previously. One of the most famous economic relationships to do with inflation is known as the Phillips curve. This relates unemployment to inflation. As unemployment decreases, inflation increases. This could be because the common factor of high demand increases inflation and decreases unemployment, or because as the demand for jobs decreases, firms are forced to increase wages to attract workers. This increase in wages means producers face a higher cost of production. They put up their prices in response. However, as things become more expensive, workers need a higher relative salary to maintain their purchasing power, so wages increase again. This is known as a wage price spiral and can be very harmful for the economy. Ideally, inflation should die down as higher prices can reduce the high demands that existed in the first place, as well as increasing unemployment as firms will be unwilling to hire at increased wages, given their higher costs and the poor economic circumstances that inflation creates. Furthermore, if wages increase slower than prices, prices won't need to increase as much in subsequent rounds, and so the rate of inflation will slow down. However, this was not the case with stagflation in the 1970s, which saw high levels of unemployment and inflation, the worst of both worlds. As a response, economists realized that if people expected inflation, it would affect their behavior. If inflation is expected to remain high in the future, producers will put up their prices and employees will demand higher wages in anticipation of higher prices. As a result, a shock that may only cause a bit of inflation will snowball and create a persistent high rate of inflation divorced from the original shock. This can lead to high unemployment and high inflation. The Phillips curve and inflation expectations taken together form the bedrock of a concept known as the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, or the NARU, which guides central bank and government policymakers. Above this level of unemployment, expectations of inflation will take hold and inflation increases at an accelerating rate. Governments and central banks must work together to credibly push down expected inflation to put an end to this acceleration through committing to increasing interest rates at the expense of economic growth. Unfortunately for policymakers, knowing exactly where the Nehru level is can be very difficult to estimate. Taken together, a mix of all these factors can go a long way to explaining inflation. A weakened pound makes imports more expensive, while higher global oil prices filter through into every area of the economy. Excess demand has increased post-COVID as firms start doing the things put off during the lockdown. 
Meanwhile, higher inflation expectations for the future may extend the duration of inflationary events. As a society, we must ask ourselves two key questions. How persistent do we expect inflation to be? And to what extent are we happy sacrificing jobs and wage growth to prevent this? Unfortunately, there are no easy answers to these questions. To follow where inflation is going, sign up to our monthly CPI tracker. For more content from NISA, visit our website and follow us on social media.